it's going to get real in this episode. I'm not pulling any punches, and I'm putting on my opinionated hat. I really don't like ORMs and ODMs. Yes, you can get something up and running pretty quick when using them, but most of a software project's life is spent outside the first 15 minutes of its existence. Like, that is a trivial fraction, a rounding error. To optimize for the initial lines of a project, therein lies madness. In this episode, I'm going to start making the case for why ORMs and ODMs are detrimental both to your software's health and your own. What is an ORM? What is an ODM? Ruby on Rails' active record is an example of an ORM. ORM stands for Object Relational Mapping. The relational in that comes from relational database systems. Such systems, like Postgres, store data in tables that are related to each other. Data stored in that manner isn't structured in the same way that objects in object-oriented programming are. We can discuss the ills of OOP in a later episode, but to get the ball rolling there, I'm including a rather lengthy read in the show notes. Anyway, since data in tables doesn't automatically map to objects with methods that manipulate that data, ORMs are a software layer that try to pull that mapping off. They lure the unsuspecting programmer into thinking that one can ignore SQL and the cost of dealing with the database and just pretend that one is dealing with plain objects. ODMs are similar, but ODM stands for Object Document Mapper. These are used with non-relational data stores, such as MongoDB. Mongoose, which we're using in NodeSlash, is an ODM. Now because NodeSlash is such an internet phenomenon, people are signing up for it left and right. Now this may come as a shocker, but not everyone ending up at our sign-up page is both morally upright and a perfect typist. So, for whatever reason, we end up with people claiming that their parents named them the empty string and stuff like that. We protect against that by using Mongoose's validation features. It seems simple enough, right? Declare a field and then declare what types of things are valid with it, right? Take user input, stick it directly on an object, and then try to save. The validations will save us. Sure, while a project is really small, like Node Slash currently is, they'll get us up and running fast, which it did. But let's take a step back. Let's assume for a minute that we're still on board with object-oriented programming. You've likely heard of the single responsibility principle, coined by Uncle Bob Martin. This principle states that a module should have one and only one reason to change. How many different reasons to change does this very simple model have? What if MongoDB proves unsuitable for our needs? What if we change what valid input looks like? Going beyond validation, look at the additional functionality we've added to this model. What if how we encode passwords changes? What if and what if and what if? An object originating from an ORM or ODM has about a bazillion responsibilities. They hopelessly couple persisting data to operations that manipulate that data. I contend this kind of haphazard coupling makes software more difficult to maintain. So let's do a quick segue into space. Space is really big. So big that it'll hurt your head to really think about how big it is. If you want to get a good feel for how big it is, check out this website that puts the solar system in a scale such that the entire moon is one pixel and goes from there. If you like space, you've probably heard about black holes. Maybe you've even seen the recently released Christopher Nolan film Interstellar that rather prominently features a black hole. Black holes are really big too, and they have massive gravity. They pull in everything around them and they let nothing escape. Okay, back to our code. This validation problem perfectly highlights the problem with ORMs and ODMs. They are like the black holes of software development, complete with time dilation in that they make everything take longer than it should. Validating input is a rather simple task that, strictly speaking, really doesn't have a lot to do with the actual persistence of the data. Not all the validation is related to persistence, but because it has some tangential application to the user model, the ORM pulls that responsibility right in. Is hashing a password really related to persistence? No, but hey, users have passwords, so pull it in. This is what ORM ORMs and ODMs do every time. ORMs and ODMs beget this kind of mess, but they start out so innocent because you can get a blog up and running in 15 minutes. Only these objects start getting everywhere in your system, spreading their tendrils until one day you look up and see who's at the root of those tendrils. Yes, that's right, the Elder God Cthulhu himself. If you're agreeing with me at this point, you may be wondering what the alternative is. 
The alternative is solid design principles. If you want to get started on the mental exercise though, just start considering how you would separate data validation from persistence. Does the data validation even need to be attached to an object? Isn't it just kind of like a filter function that takes potential input data in and returns a list of errors with that input or perhaps just filters out the bad data? Stay tuned for the coming episodes in which I'll show you a better way.